Hi, I'm Katharina van Braunschweig. As you know, I'm a psychologist, and psychologists like to talk about emotions. <laughs> um, that's a bit of a challenge for me today, because normally I do that in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, you're quite a bit more. Um, <laughs> so I'll do it with a raise of hands. Um, so I'll need you to show your hands uh, on my questions. Um, who of you likes to be happy? Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> and who of you likes to feel anxious? Yeah, that's a lot less. Um, I kind of expected that. Uh, we don't like these unpleasant emotions, do we? But I'm here to tell you why you should be happy about feeling anxious sometimes. I'm here to tell you why our unpleasant emotions are secret superpowers hidden inside us. Superpowers that might help save mankind from extinction. But let's start from scratch. Why do we even have emotions? I mean, it's, it's a bit of a hassle. We don't usually like to have them, except for joy. Um, but I'm sorry to say, there is no light without shadow. There is no joy without anger, fear, sadness, and disgust. The absence of emotions is what we as psychologists call depression. And it kind of makes sense that if something bad happens to us, we feel bad about it. Because our emotions are like indicators. They indicate if one of our basic needs isn't met. I guess you all know someone who's hangry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or someone who keeps moaning when they're tired. Yeah, we've all been there. Um, but there aren't just physical basic needs. There's also a whole range of psychological basic needs. And when these aren't met, we have unpleasant emotions as well. So, for example, if our need for safety and control isn't satisfied, we are afraid and we react with fight or flight back to safety. If someone insults us, we get angry and that helps us defend ourselves. And if we lose someone we love, we will grieve and that will help us overcome the loss. So there is a whole lot of sense in all these emotions because they point us to our psychological basic needs. Safety, self-esteem, a sense of belonging and relationships, as well as finding pleasure. And once all these needs are satisfied, we feel joy. That's our reward. Psychologist Paul Ekman found a whole range of basic emotions that people all across the world share. Anger, fear, sadness, joy, and disgust. And you might want to know how we identify these basic emotions. It's basically because they all have a very specific facial expression. And that's quite handy because that way we can communicate how we feel without words. And others will just by looking at us know how we are feeling and therefore also what we need. And that's, by the way, why emotions work. <laughs> but coming back to the climate crisis and saving us from going extinct. Feeling bad about the state of our world shows us that something is wrong. It shows us that we need an intact nature to strive and that there are dangers to living in a world with climate change. The prospect of a future with conflicts over resources and more and more extreme weather events like floods, droughts, hurricanes and forest fires, to me at least, is quite scary. And it is unfair and it makes me angry that people in the global south suffer the most while they are the least responsible. It is unfair that we as consumers are told to feel guilty about the way we eat, heat our homes or get to our holiday destinations, while politicians and corporates fail to act decisively. So our climate emotions, our climate anxiety, our eco-anger and our eco-grief, they are fully appropriate feelings. And of course, these aren't nice feelings. 
<laughs> but our climate emotions don't just point us to our basic needs, they also tell us about our values. Values like health, or justice, or caring for others. And while they are, of course, not a beautiful state to be in, and they can be quite overwhelming, and then it is hard to act wisely or to act at all, this makes sense. And in that case, if you're overwhelmed by these emotions, that is what, this is what you can do. Serve the peak of your emotion like a wave. As long as you don't feed your emotion with more thought on the problem, it will pass. I promise, if you just feel without ruminating, it won't last longer than 7 to 12 minutes. And then, ask yourself what these emotions are trying to tell you about your needs and values. Because our emotions point us to these values that are like a compass. They give us direction and they give us the energy to act accordingly. They give us the energy to hold others accountable. They give us the energy to change our own behavior. They give us the energy to inspire others to, to act. And they give us the energy to make solutions more likely. That way, you too might become a climate advocate. You might even end up giving a TED talk. <laughs> um, and there's so much sense in this. Living a values-based life makes our lives more meaningful. In these terms, times of crises, like the climate crisis or the corona pandemic, make us reconsider what really matters to us. For example, in the corona pandemic during lockdown, people missed meeting their friends and hugging their loved ones more than going shopping. So maybe real bliss doesn't come from buying that new phone or a golden watch or a faster car. Maybe real bliss comes from consuming less, from meeting your friends, from meaningful conversations, and from experiencing nature. In hardship, our routines are interrupted, and that opens a window of opportunity. Opportunity for your personal growth if you rise to these challenges. Who do you want to be in these challenging times? What do you want your legacy to be? And of course, challenges are just that, challenging. <laughs> You won't feel great during challenging times. You will be sad, you will be angry, and you will be anxious. And these emotions are your allies. They are the fire in your heart that gives you direction and the energy to act. So if you don't know where to start about changing the world, listen to what your heart tells you. What are you worried about? What makes you angry? What sparks passion inside of you? That is the direction to go. What will you do about the various challenges our society and our planet are facing? So when through our emotions we get into contact with our needs and values, that doesn't just help us lead a more satisfying and values-based life. Ultimately, our climate emotions can save the world. Thank you. <laughs>